Welcome back, everybody. I'm Jay. He's Maddie. This is Yankee and the Brit Sports Talk. And today we're going to talk about Antonio Brown ripping off his jersey and walking off the field. What the fuck, man? Hey, I wasn't done talking. Okay. Okay. Sorry. I had to. I had to in honor of AB. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was like, oh shit, what's going on there? I was like, oh fuck. Sorry, sorry. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Shit. The reason why I just look so scared there is because I've I, I just kept Jay waiting for twenty five minutes while my fucking laptop <sighs> was updating. But so honestly, my British ass just shit themselves. <laughs> Oh no! Like my need to say sorry just went insane. <laughs> you know, I had to. It's the only reason I was wearing a jacket. <laughs> um. Yeah, man. What? What the fuck? Like, as if AB couldn't get any weirder. As if Antonio Brown couldn't get any more strange. Oh, by the way, guys. Um, this is one from. We're filming it while the Cowboys game is on. I'm sitting on the floor of my apartment. That's why you can see all this mess back here. <laughs> well, Bruce Arians was asked about it after the game, and he said, I'm not going to talk about him. He is no longer a member of the Bucks, and I only talk about members of this team. Tom Brady was asked about it. Tom Brady said, we care about him past football. It's a real, I don't know, sad situation, whatever. But we need to have compassion because he's going through some difficult things, which to me, and I'm not – I. I'm just throwing this out there after everything I'm seeing. I'm guessing it's mental health issues. And if that's the case, I feel sorry for AB, but you do need to go get those addressed. And the way he ran and danced off the field waving, I have to feel like he knows it's over. No other team is going to mess with him after this. Yeah, maybe Jack be the only guy stupid enough to come get me. So maybe he was waving to the fans saying, oh, yeah. Come get me, come get me, come get me. But yeah, if it, if it's mental health issues, then fine. Obviously, that's that's terrible for him. Like me and you are both advocates for mental health. We've spoken about it at length uh, on many other podcasts. But sometimes when when you take the field, you're expected to be a hundred percent. Like it's what we say about injuries. It's what we say about like it's what we're going to have to say about mental health. I saw a really interesting um, comment in one of the Facebook groups that I'm currently beefing in. Uh, at the minute, um, uh, saying, "Oh, how many concussions has AB had?" Then you, you've got to think, "Oh, maybe with a guy who's like this and the amount of mistakes he made, maybe that has something to do with it." The toll on his brain, but would be interesting to see the correlation. But in that organization, that dude's been given so many chances already. I mean, he committed a felony earlier this year. Like he couldn't be, he couldn't have been given a better situation to go to, and he's fucked it again. And if it's for mental health, then yeah, that's upsetting, and I'm sorry. But at the same time, you can't behave in that way in professional setting. And it, like, if it is mental health, then you would have been fired from any other job as well, or yeah. a little article. At some point, there's got to be accountability no matter what's going on, and nobody's held him accountable, so yeah. it kept going. I mean, if you remember a couple of years ago, they beat up a delivery driver with a bag of dildos. I mean, I'm just saying, like, A.B.'s been in some weird shit. He's walked off the field in Pittsburgh. He's done all kinds of stuff. There is a long track record with him, so no matter what's going on, and I hope he gets any help he may need, but – you can only help a guy so long. And if he doesn't want to help himself, then it's over. And I really can't see any other team taking a chance on him after everything that's happened with him over the last few years. Yeah. I think it's going to be really difficult for anybody to take a spot on him. There's been a a bit of chat. It's what everybody's talking about on Facebook at the minute, basically, isn't it? And on Twitter and places like that as well. It's what everybody's talking about. There's games going on and we're all still talking about AB. Where could he go from here? And I saw somebody put out the Green Bay Packers and I was like, interesting. I mean, he it's a chance for another ring and he'd put him over the top. 
but when was the last time they signed anybody? I would need to know more about what was said in the locker room to make him act like that or what made him act like that before I could say anything about that. But I feel like the Packers are a bit too buttoned up for that kind of bullshit. He's the kind of guy that could take the Packers over the top, take them out of the NFC game and into the Super Bowl. But he's also the guy that could stop them from getting to the NFC game altogether. Yeah, and he's just a, he's not a team guy. And I'm sorry, but no matter how bad a coach or another player pissed me off, I would never walk out on my team. I would never leave my teammates yeah. hanging. And there's a lot to be said about that. And as good as A.B. is, there is a ton of guys that can do that job, maybe not to his level, but close enough that are team guys where people are going to go, it's not worth the headache. It's not worth answering the questions. And what if we get to the NFC Championship game and he just decides he's not going to play? Yeah, of course. Uh, we were just saying on our last I thought I found it so ironic that on our last podcast, we were talking about um, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers struggles and the fact that they were getting AB and Gronk back. And AB is kind of the guy that actually makes their offense kind of tick over. Like he's the guy that makes it tick. Like, yeah, Mike Evans came up with a few big plays today. Chris Godwin always comes up with a big play here and there. But play by play, it's Antonio Brown, Rob Gronkowski doing the meat and potatoes kind of stuff that Tom Brady needs, the Julian Edelman and Robert Gronkowski stuff uh, that Tom Brady kind of needs out there without that going into the playoffs. And if they kept him, they could have been without that during the middle of the game where they hadn't had the chance to plan for it. Scotty Miller will be back in the lineup, I imagine, taking up that role. And he's a very, very good wide receiver. We've seen him come up with some big stuff in a lot of big games. I do think it's going to end up hurting the Bucks, but we'll see. Um, yeah. And I guess we're going to find out more. Something's going to leak out about what happened. So I'm sure by time you and I record again, again, this is right in the middle of the Cowboys game next week, then we'll probably know more <laughs> about what's going on. Yeah, yeah. And we sat here and we'll probably look like assholes because AB was totally justified on walking out or something like I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. Can't I can't see anybody. Oh, what the fuck did the Cowboys just do? Sorry, I can't uh I can't see anybody kind of saying, oh yeah, fucking great idea, A B for walking out. Tom Brady must be fucking livid, is what I'm is what I'm feeling about it. Yeah. And I feel like they have a, a tighter relationship than just teammates. So there's probably some personal, yeah. you just made me look stupid, but Tom's too classy. He's never going to say that. He's never going to throw a teammate under a bus or anything like that. So it is what it is, I guess, and we're going to see. But I think every other team that's in contention for the Super Bowl in the NFC just kind of took a sigh of relief. Yeah, definitely. It definitely makes the books a bit less of a threat. Stuff's been kind of falling off books for a little bit of time now. Like, stuff's been kind of... Snowball. Fall, the wheels are kind of falling off. Yeah, they just kind of struggled to get out of New York. Like, if New York, if the Jets weren't the Jets, then they, they could have come away with a win that, uh, just then. Or at least they would have taken it to overtime if they kicked the field goal and... Uh, right. didn't play such fucking passive defense. It's always it's always the same. We say this we say this all the time with these kind of games. Like, why do they switch to passive defense so quickly? And, uh, yeah, that's why you don't switch to passive defense so quickly, I guess. Uh, you get smoke like that by the greatest of all time. Um, but, yeah, Antonio Brown's going to leave a huge hole for the Jets. And I would say it's sad to see a guy's career and this is his career over. It's it's sad to see that, but at the same time, dude's career probably could have ended three times by now if he hadn't had so many chances. Yeah, if he didn't have Hall of Fame talent, he would have never got those chances. He just killed his chance at the Hall of Fame, though, because I think yeah. his career's over. But we'll beat up on the Jets later on this week for their play calling, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah all right guys so uh that's it that was a quick impromptu video that we wanted to get to uh just to kind of talk you through what we're thinking about the antonio brown stuff we'll come out with the more detailed things when more stuff gets leaked it may not be a surprise to you guys we are not nfl insiders 
So we wait for the NFL insiders to kind of give us their shit. And then we go from that. Well, all right, guys. Thanks for watching. One world, one love. Deuces. Cheerio.